you have to work very hard, you have to be curious, and you have to uh, be so committed that to this profession that you couldn't imagine doing anything else. Hello, I'm Ricardo Cincinnatis. I'm the assistant concert master of the National Symphony Orchestra, and my instrument is the violin. I became a musician mainly because my father loved music. He was a dentist, and he played the violin and the viola, um, and he was my first teacher. Three months later, I won a competition, and I was put with a professional teacher who was excellent. And three years later, I was sent to Europe to study. I don't know if that would surprise people, but I was at one point an engineering major for two semesters until I saw there was an opening for the first concert master job of the Brazilian Symphony Orchestra. I'm very lucky to play two good instruments. One I owned is a French violin made by Jean-Baptiste Fillon in 1873. It's a wonderful instrument. I'm very, very lucky to have, to, that I was able to buy it. It's one piece back, meaning it doesn't have a... Uh, some, some violins are sometimes with two piece back, like this one that I'm gonna show you later. And it's very beautiful and it's, it sounds very nice. A violin is uh, uh, made of pine on the top. This is pine. This is maple, so which are much harder wood than the top. Some people say that those instruments from the uh, 18th century, 19th century, were produced with wood that passed through a, a tiny ice age, which made the rings of the trees much tighter. Uh, and so the pine that's used is harder, more brittle, which produces a more brilliant sound. So that's it. The other violin, which I'm beyond lucky to be able to use it, is a violin made by Francesco Ruggeri. It's on loan to the National Symphony Orchestra and um, through uh, a foundation called Pro Canale. It's, a, it's an amazing instrument. It's uh, so old. Uh, it's building 1686. If you held a violin like this, you see that it's extremely light. Um, and it's amazing that it survived 333 plus years. Um, and was made in Cremona. That's the birthplace of the violin. And uh, it's a wonderful way. It's more brilliant than the viol. It's a wonderful violin. It projects like crazy. And you can see that it was used a lot, uh, as if you could see this crawl, it is worn out a little bit on one side from people tuning over 300 years. Hello, this is my studio. Um, it is uh, actually acoustically controlled because it's so small that when my wife and I uh, we put it together, we found out it was really dry, so dry acoustic. So we added a system that makes it uh, resonant. This is a picture of a very famous violin that was given to me by my laws as his autograph. His name was Fritz Chrysler. And here is where I teach, here is where I practice, and, and I don't disturb anybody because it's soundproof. If something happens to me, nobody will find out. I'm very lucky because I get to do something I love and make a living doing it. Um, and I get to work with wonderful colleagues. I get to work with wonderful conductors. I listen to wonderful musicians all the time, great guests, musicians, soloists, singers. And I'm very lucky, no question about it.